Americans at work, performing a service on which every man, woman, and child, important people in the lives of well-groomed and attractive women. For appearance sake, these workers are a necessary part of our lives. For more than 6,000 years, the art of cutting hair has been practiced as a craft. In ancient Egypt, barbers trimmed the square-cut beards of the pharaohs. Today, they care for the square cuts on top of the head. The modern mirrored barber shop of today is quite different from the tonsorial parlor of 50 years ago. But the barber's work remains the same. A never-changing part of his job is reassuring youngsters who, while they may not object violently, are still a bit hesitant about a haircut. Under the striped barber cloth, any customer becomes wrapped in some of the tradition that has surrounded barbers and their shops since the time of Plato, in the days of ancient Greece. The first barbering clubs were formed where men would meet to discuss the topics of the day while having their hair trimmed and beards curled. Today's barber is still an advisor or patient listener to affairs in the lives of his customers. To women, a beauty salon is more than a feminine barber shop. It is a place where they may be transformed from commonplace to outstanding, where natural beauty is developed and accentuated. Often, a woman's attractiveness begins in the hands of a hairstylist, an artist who can instantly create an individualistic coiffure and communicate the exact details to an assistant. Hairdressers learn by doing, following the instructions of the stylist, who may be guided by the season the shape of the head or features of the face. An entirely different treatment may be dictated to satisfy the mood of his customer. From courts of royalty, the beautician has become an important part of everyday American life. Just as a beautician learns the craft on the job, a barber begins as an apprentice in an established shop. In times past, a young man learned how and went to work. Now, in all but a few states, he must be schooled and examined before he can be licensed as an apprentice and then as a journeyman barber. Eventually, he may open his own shop where he might begin training licensed apprentices himself. The transformation that can take place in a young girl's appearance simply by changing the style of her hair is deftly accomplished in the hands of an experienced beautician. That little girl look can be replaced by sophistication with quick strokes of scissors and comb. Mother and daughter visits to the beauty shop are becoming as regular as the traditional partnership of father and son at the barber shop. This is an exclusive men's world where women do not go even though the first women's haircuts were performed there before beauty shops were opened. The union shop sign is a symbol of good barbering today, just as many shelves of personalized shaving mugs indicated it in the gay 90s. With the passing of the shaving mug and mustache wax went another of barbering's most prized accomplishments, the harmony of the barber shop quartet. A barber shop is a combination of many things, old and new. At one time, a man visited a barber shop as much to relax as to have his hair attended. 
Now, modern women go to the beauty shop with the same objective. Special facial treatments bring to milady's countenance a look of health and youth. A manicurist shapes and polishes her nails to accentuate the length and gracefulness of long, tapering fingers. Knowledge of skin care and facial structure is something a beautician learns as an apprentice. Her fingers are the tools with which she always works. The direction in which they move, the rhythm of the massage, perform another kind of beauty magic. A woman's hands are as important to her as her face, hair and clothing, if she is to feel well dressed and at ease. Men are no more without vanity than women. As members of a civilized society, we are concerned with our appearance before others. In earliest civilizations, the barber has been an integral part. While we are not too sensitive to changing fashion and style, it was not always so. Men once wore wigs and elaborate haircuts that required more hours to prepare than many women spend before their mirrors today. The convenient shortcuts men now wear require less time, but father and barber begin early to train a youngster's hair to the shape it will take as he grows. Because women can wear their hair very long or short, or anywhere in between, they may present an endless variety of styles for their admirers. Of course, once long hair has been cut short, only time can change it back. But in the meantime, a clever stylist can change its shape to emphasize features, to change the entire appearance of a customer. Cutting hair to fit a specific personality is what makes the difference between a hair cutter and an artist. It is amazing how happy a boy can look after a haircut especially as soon as he steps down from the barber chair. To most of us, when we are young, haircuts seem pretty useless, since the hair will always just grow back again, for some of us anyway. But when you're on your way to meet your best girl, it's worth all the trouble.